Welcome to the Popish Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. And we are once again with our Female Saint series. And this time, I, I noticed that our first three were all nuns or religious sisters. So I have someone today who was not a nun. Hooray! Yay! Because it's important. The Second Vatican Council emphasized that everyone has, there's a universal call to holiness. You don't have to be a religious or a cleric to be holy. But sometimes when you're doing the research, it's kind of hard to find someone who wasn't a religious who makes it all the way to the altars. Yes. Was she, was she also from a small family? No. No. Mm. She was the 10 of 13 kids. Yowza. Yeah. Only eight lived into adulthood. So, and well, that she, got dark really fast. <laughs> she's, well, they're in heaven now. She's a, she's a fairly recent saint. She was born in what year? Um, well, first, I don't think we actually said her name. <laughs> Gianna Baretta Mola. She was born October 4th in 1922 in what was then the Kingdom of Italy. Mm -hmm. And she died April 28th, 1962 in what was then Italy. The Republic <laughs> of Italy, yeah. yeah. Only 39 years old. She is the patron of families, mothers, mm -hmm. physicians, unborn children, wives, and the World Meeting of Families for 2015. Nice. Which I'm sure she gets, you know, called by a lot now. <laughs> anyway, and as one time before, we, we, we made fun of Third Orders. Both of her parents were Third Order Franciscans. <laughs> that, one, that, that one's going to come around and haunt me for like forever. <laughs> I'll be I'll be, in, I'll, I'll be in heaven and there'll be somebody who'll walk up and be like, so what was that about Third <laughs> Orders? Well, no, you're, you're, the real thing you have to worry about is Rose of Lima and Catherine of Siena, both of whom were Third Order Dominicans. <laughs> And who... <laughs> we heard you have strong opinions about Third Order. Especially, you know, Catherine, because it, 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 it has, you know, informed my church hierarchy of laities, deacons, <laughs> priests, bishops, cardinals, pope, laywoman who yells at the pope for doing stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, pope, be a man. But, <laughs> but anyway. That's not, the, that's not the Italian we're talking about today. No. no. No, and she is not the only holy person in her family because one of her brothers, Enrico, is currently a servant of God. You know, <laughs> saints don't happen in isolation. They're often either in families of saints, you know, the uh, the Martin Martins being the or like great communities, example, mm -hmm. or they know each other. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. As a kid, she had what she probably felt was a normal childhood. She mm -hmm. enjoyed skiing and mountain climbing, which probably she's with, probably in the area of Italy where they had mountains. You yeah, know, yeah, probably sense. with probably with Pier Giorgio Frassati. They, they all know each other. I don't. <laughs> but she also had chronic health issues oh. to the extent that she actually had to take a year off of school for health. Wow. Mm. Um, but in 1942, she started studying medicine and graduated in 1949. Now, this is 1942, Italy, she started studying medicine. Middle of World War II. Yes. They're only a year from surrendering. Yes. It's a rough time. Indeed. It's not only a rough time, but... In a, a book we will be discussing later, because it is written by someone who's not a saint, they, they pointed out the fact that Italy at that time wasn't the most progressive place in the world. Well, it mm. was being run by fascists. Literally. Not even just the fascists. <laughs> no, just Italian culture. Just the culture at that time. Was... Machismo. Yes. Oh, I understand. I'm just saying. I mean... Yes, I'm just saying. She, she became a doctor in the 40s when in America, I checked, the last school in America that finally let women study to be doctors allowed this in 1961. So as late as 1961, we still had one school that wasn't even admitting female medical students. You know, and say Gianna would be dead within a year. Yes. But she had already been a, a doctor for years. Um, she, after she graduated, opened mm -hmm. an office, and she specialized in pediatrics. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, she also seemed to work some with the local university as a doctor. Sure. Uh, she had wanted to be a missionary doctor in Brazil, nice. which is where her brother, who became a priest and is currently a the servant, servant of, of God, God mm -hmm. was working. Mm -hmm. But due to her health issues, yep. she yep. wasn't allowed because, yep. you know, you're in Brazil, you can't really be sickly all the time. Well, it depends mm -hmm. where in Brazil, but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're going to the missions. The missions. Yeah. In the 40s. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. Um. So then she discerned a call to married life. Hey. And went wholehearted into the fact that, you know, she wanted to then be a, a, a wife and mother. Hey, if, I, <laughs> hey, if I can't, I, I don't feel called to be a nun. I can't be a missionary. Might as, well, might, as well, might as well flip the coin and see what's on the other side. Be fruitful and multiply, as the Lord himself said. Exactly. 
well, I mean, you make it sound like it's a, you know, a prize for, well, that's, but you know, she was really into it. (laughs) So she ended up meeting a uh, man in 1954 who was an engineer Mm. and they got married September 24th in 1955. Yay. And shortly after they got married, because she wanted to be a mother too, they Mm -hmm. started having kids. She had her first child. Pierre Luigi. Was born in 56. Um, Her next child. Mariolina. Was born in 57. And unfortunately, she passed away in 1964. Mm. Mm. And her third child. This one's a tough one. Um, Let me see. Laura. Yes. Laura. (laughs) That's a tough one. It's the only one that's incredibly Italian. (laughs) Was born in 1959. Um, But most anyone who knows anything about her mostly knows about her fourth child. Um, in 1961, she was pregnant with her fourth child, and at two months in, they found that she had a tumor in her uterus. Dun, dun, dun. Now, the doctors gave her three ways that they could deal with it with the medicine at the time, because her story really, it's an issue of the medical knowledge of the day. Um, number one, they could perform an abortion and then get rid of the tumor. Mm -hmm. Number two, they could perform a complete hysterectomy. Which would also bring about the effect of the abor- the effect of the abortion, while not the intent. Yes, this would be a case of double effect, where the first goal is to fix the health issue, and the unfortunate side effect is due to the level of modern medicine. It would also cause the death of her child. And her third option was they could attempt to remove the tumor alone, and hopefully the pregnancy would be able to continue. Somewhat normally, but it had a lot of risk for both her and the baby in either case. Now, Mm -hmm. of these three options, it's important to note that two of them are completely licit. Yes. Yes. The first, direct abortion, right out. But with the hysterectomy, would be permitted because the point of that was to get rid of the cancer and the double effect. It's just incidental that the child would also die. Yes. yes. If, if by I some chance they could do the hysterectomy and the child lived, Great. everybody would be, woo! And I don't think it was cancer. It was simply that with the size of the tumor and yep. the location, yep. it wasn't going to yep. let her carry the yep. baby to term either way. Yeah. So it would have been totally fine for her to save her life. But she made the same choice that our Lord did. She said that the life of her child was more important than her own. Yes. So, on April 21st of 1963, which happened to be Holy Saturday that year, her daughter, and just because I'm making Nate read all the names, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gianna Emanuela, was born via C-section. Hooray! And baby was fine. Uh, I've heard interviews with her. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mother was okay at first. However, again, it's an issue of medicine of the day, as Mm -hmm. she ended up developing um sepsis septic peritonitis yes from the Mm c-section and that is what ended up she died about a week later from it so easter saturday well yeah a week Mm -hmm. later later. later. Mm -hmm. yes so most people know her because it was super you know it was heroic virtue it Mm -hmm. was very brave giving of yourself to be like i I definitely want my daughter to live Mm mm-hmm and I, I, I love and I respect that about her, but I also want to point out that it wasn't like, if you don't do this, you're going to die. It was, our medicine is not good enough, and then that resulted in her dying. Well, but given the time, so, it means you're yeah, going to die. Yeah, so she still, you know, was willing to do it, Yeah. knowing, because if anyone knew medicine, it's a doctor who specializes in mm-hmm. babies. Mm-hmm. Well, and th- <laughs> this is another one of those cases where you can make a great argument based on her life. Mm-hmm. That even had she lived, or even had she had the hysterectomy, yeah. she'd still be a saint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was just an incredibly holy woman. Mm-hmm. Because you know, sometimes we think, you know, she wasn't she wasn't martyred, but sometimes we think, like, oh, I can just do one heroic action, and that'll get me. But you've got to live a life of holiness to be prepared for when that moment comes. Well, and actually, <laughs> that, I would say, Mike, actually eliminates the, the choice B in this. Mm-hmm. You are correct in that she could have chosen the hysterectomy. It still would have been entirely morally illicit, and she mm-hmm. still probably would have been a saint. But I would go so far as to argue that because she was of such saintly virtue, 
choice three would have always been the choice that she would have made. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just, a lot of the times when people talk about her, it's always, she, she, she had the baby knowing it would definitely kill her. And I'm like, that's not exactly the case. Yeah. She could have totally lived. (laughs) She could have survived, but it was low probability. Yeah. The, the odds Mm -hmm. were against her, but it's, yeah. Yes. Mm And her whole life, you know, it wasn't like just, I had this great moment. It was. You know, from from a child, she's like, I want to be a missionary like my big brother. Mm-hmm. I'm too sick for it. I'm going to take care of little children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I especially like the miracles for her canonization. These are good. Just because it is like uh, both of the miracles for her canonization, because you got one for being blessed, yep. one for being a saint. Thank you, John Paul II, for cutting that in half. Yes. Yeah. Involve pregnant women slash new mothers. They were... In Brazil, the country that she wanted to go to with her brother. Yep. Uh, they involved women having C-sections, mm-hmm. like she had for her fourth child, and they were also on their fourth child. So, th- clearly, these are women who are very close to her heart. Yes. This is this is not one where some random, unrelated thing prayed, you know, and they're like, oh, it's a miracle. This is like, these are people in her situation. She's like, I'm going to let them live. I'm going to beg God for, for their life. <laughs> Although, my, my, my favorite part is that the, the woman involved in the first miracle, Wasn't even she, was a, she was a Protestant, so she didn't even pray for St. Gianna's intervention. It was one of the nurses taking care of her who interceded for her. Yes, yes. The, the first one for being blessed happened to be Protestant. Um, she, again, was pregnant with her fourth child. Unfortunately, she had a stillborn and had a C-section, and she left the hospital after nine days because at the time you spent a lot more time in the hospital for mm-hmm. a C-section than you do now. Mm-hmm. And they, they gave her a clean bill of health. Mm-hmm. So she started working like normal. She was a house cleaner. Mm-hmm. Then she got, um, she felt really, really bad. So like, she, she went back to the hospital. They dev- found that she had a complication that the local hospital, which was a hospital founded in part by St. Giotto's brother. <laughs> <laughs> could not handle it's, it's mm-hmm. all connected yes because she needed like major surgery mm-hmm. so she needed to go to the big hospital that was like 600 kilometers away over you know rough roads this mm-hmm. is, you know, but yeah. by the time you get home. by the time you get there you'll never make it you won't you make won't it. you won't need the hospital anymore mm-hmm. so one of the nurses happened to also be a religious sister and she started praying and she got a couple of the other nurses in on praying and her pain disappeared at which point the doctors you know started looking at it because her pain should not disappear oh, there's, there's no way this stopped hurting <laughs> yes it she was healed without any medical intervention <laughs> just gone <laughs> yep <laughs> well how do you explain that uh i can't that's what makes it a miracle yes yeah. the the second one um in the first month of her pregnancy she had a hemorrhage and a large Ugh. blood clot from it that Ugh. usually results in losing the child yeah on its own yeah but the baby was alive. It was Whew. incredibly small for where it should be, and the doctors are like, it's not going to survive. And well, then, Sure, there's a blood clot. It's probably being choked of the nutrients yeah. it needs. And then at, at 16 weeks, she ended up getting a, a, a um, tear in the placenta that resulted in losing all the fluid. Yeah, not, not some. All, all the amniotic fluid, just gone. Yeah, and they tried. There's some procedures to attempt to get you know it back. None of these worked. Um, it was basically at the point where the, the doctors were telling her, you can wait for it to happen naturally and you have a high chance that you're going to have an infection too, or we can remove the baby because it cannot survive. Yeah, again, when, when mm-hmm. we're babies, we live in amniotic fluid for the first nine months. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and you're like, but it's just liquid. But essentially it's, it's padding. Mm-hmm. 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 It serves a lot of functions. So her friend went and said, like, I'm going to go pray in the chapel at the hospital. She runs into... The bishop for the area at the hospital in the chapel. He happened to actually know the family because he's the one who married them. So it turns out that um, they got her whole parish praying for her, a bunch of Carmelite sisters. (laughs) And then the Carmelite sisters would essentially message people throughout the country of Brazil who were converts (laughs) to also pray for her. Um, So she ended up... Carmelites. She ended up, they, 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 they were monitoring her closely because they're mm-hmm. like, yeah. it's going to be any time now and we don't want you to die too. Yeah. But they're, it never happened. They're monitoring to save her life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she she had a C-section because we mentioned it's yep. fourth child C-section yep. at 32 yep. weeks, which is, you know, she had a minor issue of a slightly twisted left foot that was able to be fixed with surgery and some um, physical therapy. 
She she'd been without amniotic fluid for months, and yet she was still born essentially healthy. Yeah. Uh, the mom had some major complications that she then ended up um, recovering from. So Hooray. she lived through it too. So it's just. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh. I just love this because I'm, I'm looking through it and like a lot of saints, it's, you know, someone completely unrelated said, hey, I'll ask this blessed to pray for yeah, me. Nope. But no, it's like, nope. uh, these are the exact people she wanted to help in her life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's just continuing the same good works from heaven. Hmm. So she's got her, so, so it, she's dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. She, she's got her, she's, she, she's, she's clearly got a cultist. Mm-hmm. She's, she's got miracles. <laughs> she's got two miracles. So, let's talk about canonization. So, she was canonized on May 16th in 2004. Her husband and her three living children were attending the canonization, which is the only time in, as far as we know, the, you know, history of the Recorded church. history. You know, I mean, back in the days when a martyr got, you know, proclaimed a, a, a saint instantly. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, besides that. Yeah, yeah. Where a husband got to attend his wife's canonization. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Um, the fourth child, she's also a doctor, mm-hmm. and the reason, in part, why the the um, patronage of the world meeting of the families is because her daughter actually spoke at it with um, letters and stuff that her mom wrote during her life. Yeah, and again, that part of the reason why I say that she'd probably be a saint even without this one action is because she wrote so beautifully of the Lord and what he'd done in her life and what he did for all of us. Yes. Although, what I really love about Gianna Emanuela mm-hmm. is she always refers to St. Gianna as St. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's just adorable. I, I, I mean... St. Mom! Given the family, she probably does St. Mom versus just Mom. Because she's like, that's what I call the Virgin Mary. Exactly. So, you know, I've got to distinguish between all my saintly mothers. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, good. <laughs> St. Gianna Barretta Mola, which is just fun to say. It is fun. It is. It's a lot of love balls. Pray for us. So go down below to the comment section. And as always, when, when, we're, when, we're, doing, when we're doing pieces on uh, saints, we want more saints. I mean, we want, we want more saints, but we want more saints to go and actually talk about. So uh, feel free to go down below into the comment section and tell us of a saint that you think that we should go and share with the world. Mm-hmm. Or if you have a saint who's... Um, miracles for canonization were even more on topic than this. We want to know because this is this is insanely on topic. <laughs> <laughs> like this video, subscribe to our channel, ring the church bell to be notified the next time a plot is uploaded. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. Share, Share that love. love. <laughs> Saint Mama. So I, I believe it would technically be like Santa Mama. I've heard the interviews. She says Saint Mama. I oh, believe okay. she speaks English too. Yeah, yeah she okay. interviews in English. I don't speak Italian.